Hi class, welcome. It's Dr. Lindner. Welcome to the class, Anatomy and Physiology. Let's take a look at Anatomy and Physiology. Why don't we try and figure out what this is? So when we look at anatomy, anatomy is when we describe the structures of a human body. We're talking about structure or we're talking about form, what things are made of, where they're located, all the different structures associated with it. This is structure. When we look at structure, we can analyze structure by looking at uh, x-rays, uh, MRIs, CAT scans, dissection. Um, that's how we can analyze the actual structure. Whereas physiology, this is when we refer to function. So anatomy is structure or form. Physiology refers to the study of function. And in anatomy and physiology, we say structure determines function. The way something is structured or the way something is designed helps to determine how it is going to function. If we look at a knee joint and we look at the knee, the knee can flex and extend because it works like a hinge, like the hinge of a doorway, opening and closing. But when we look at the shoulder joint, the shoulder joint is not like a hinge. It's like a ball and socket joint. So it can move in a variety of directions because it's structured differently. It functions differently. When we look at anatomy, we have macroscopic anatomy, right? Things you can see with the naked eye, but then we have microscopic anatomy. This can examine things that you can't see with the naked eye. So when we're looking at the human cells or we're looking at molecules, this is all microscopic. You can't see molecules or cells with the naked eye. When we study the cell, we refer to that as cytology. We're studying the cell and their structures. There are many words in anatomy that will have the word site attached to it, like osteocyte. Osteo means bone, osteocyte. Or we have a word like Hepato site. Hepato means liver. So it's a liver cell. This is a bone cell. All right. So site, cytology is the study of their, the cells and their different structures. Now, when we take a bunch of cells and we bring them together, cells come together and they make tissues. And there are four different types of tissues. And we'll talk about tissues in a following week, but the four types of tissues are epithelial, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nerve tissue. So we have four different types of tissues in the body. When cells come together, they're going to make either epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, or nerve tissue. When we study cells, we call that histology. The person that studies, I'm sorry, when we study tissues, it's histology. The person that studies those tissues is called a histologist. A histologist is going to study tissues. When you go to a dermatologist and they have to do a biopsy and take all, they, they remove and slough off some cells and of the skin. It's going to a histologist to examine them. When women go to the gynecologist and they go for a pap smear, when they go for a pap smear, they're sloughing off cells and tissues of the cervix or the uterus. It's going to a histologist. And the term pap, a pap from pap smear actually comes from a Greek physician, George Papanakulau, George Papanakulau, just in case you're ever on Jeopardy and are asked, it's George Papanakulau. 
So you heard me just say that cells come together and make tissues. Okay, and I said there were four types of tissues. I said there was epithelium, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nerve tissue. Under muscle, muscle has three flavors, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. So this is smooth muscle, just an example of that, smooth muscle. Now, I said cells come together to make tissues, but what is it that makes cells? Something has to come before the cell to make it, and that's chemistry. If you've ever heard of the term biochemistry, right? When we study biochemistry, we're looking at carbons and hydrogens and oxygens and nitrogens and phosphorus or carbohydrates, proteins and fats if we talk about dietary chemistry. And that's why we eat. If you think about it, we eat and we eat carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, and all they are are a bunch of these, you know, carbons and hydrogens and oxygens all lined up in different structures in a different way. And a carbohydrate biochemical structure is different than a protein biochemical structure. And because their structures are different, their functions are going to be different. Structure determines function, even at the biochemical level. And when we look at a cell, which we'll look at this week, when we look at a cell, I'll, I'll send out some videos on the cell. When you have a nucleus, it's going to have a uh, phospholipid membrane, meaning it's going to have two layers to the cell membrane. When we look at the cell membrane, it's made up of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. So that's why it's so important at a dietary level to have a good balance of carbs, proteins, and fats because every single cell of the human body requires it. When you rob yourself of nutrition, you're going to impact the uh, cell wall structure or that phospholipid membrane of every single cell. So you want the right balance of proteins, fats, and carbs. So in this picture, it's showing DNA, a molecule such as DNA. And even this is structure. Look, it's a double helix. And this double helix can be damaged. The structure can be damaged by lots of things, maybe pollution, maybe heavy metals in the body, maybe excessive exercise, maybe fried foods, maybe high sugar. So when you damage the structure of your chemistry, you can affect your DNA. Everything you eat can heal or hurt your DNA. If your chemical structure is off, your cellular structure is off. If your cellular structure is off, your tissue structure is off. Tissues come together to make organs. If your tissue structure is off, the organ structure is going to be off. Then organs come together and make systems. In this picture, it's showing the digestive system. But there's the digestive system, the respiratory system, the immune system, the reproductive system, the musculoskeletal system, the cardiovascular system, the endocrine system, the immune system. There's 11 different systems. And then the systems come together to make the crowning creation of all, the organism. If the structure is off at any of these levels, the function will be off. Remember structure? determines function. So chemicals come together to make cells, cells make tissues. In another week, we'll talk about the four different types of tissues. Tissues come together to make organs. In this case, it's the stomach. And you can see that the stomach is made up of some epithelial tissue and connective tissue and muscle tissue. And there's even gonna be nerve tissue in there. And then organs make systems. Here's the digestive system. A whole bunch of organs working together to digest and break down your foods. And then you have the organism. Good place to take our first break. I'll see if there's any questions. And when we come back, we'll get into the systems.